Meet Jarvis. This football-loving Glasgow boy has recently been cured from what was initially misinterpreted as asthma, pneumonia or cardiac disease. It took nine long months for doctors to finally diagnose Jarvis's condition correctly. First I got kind of breathless and I, couldn't, um, I didn't have much energy and uh, I had a bad cough. And uh, sometimes I had a pain in my chest. And then they found it was TB, so I had to, had to stay off school for about two months and I had to take lots of medicine. Child tuberculosis seems to have become so rare in certain countries that many paediatricians fail to consider it unless the patient comes from a risk group. A classic example of lack of awareness according to a leading specialist in the field, Dr Beate Kampman from Imperial College London. I think the, the first issue to raise with, in context of Jarvis's story is that really nobody really thought about the diagnosis of tuberculosis and it's very difficult to start thinking about a range of tests that might be helpful if you haven't even considered it as part of your differential diagnosis. So tuberculosis in Europe I think is perceived as a disease that has virtually died out and people just don't consider it. They hardly consider it in adults and they even less consider it in children because the number of children with TB in Europe is rare, although we have big patches of uh, quite a lot of TB in children in some places. Even though TB occurrence in Jarvis's hometown isn't high, he still got infected, possibly through a school teacher who was ill a year before. The sad fact is that neither existing vaccines nor individual tests are completely reliable. Um, and initially we didn't think it was TB, because um, he'd had a BCG, we, we didn't know at that time that didn't cover you for, for that length of time. The MON2 test, which had come back negative, and I think the main thing was because the health professionals t told us that he had pneumonia and the X-ray sh showed them that it was pneumonia and resolving pneumonia. We were told not to worry, there was nothing else going on. It's much harder to diagnose TB in a child than in an adult. Children generally don't have much saliva with enough bacteria present for a conclusive analysis. To make the correct diagnosis, paediatricians have to put together a large jigsaw puzzle of various clues. And that starts, first of all, with thinking that TB could be a possibility. Then to think about if there's been an exposure of a child to a case of tuberculosis, even if it's a while ago, then to get a good history of that uh, investigation, if there was any, to consider whether the child has symptoms and signs that fit the tuberculosis diagnosis. And they can be very nonspecific, like weight loss, coughing, but the chronicity of it is often very telling. And then uh, go all the way out to try and ascertain a microbiological diagnosis, try and get the sputum samples, try and get them set up for culture. Experts say much research is still needed to improve the diagnostic methods, to find efficient drugs that shorten the therapy time, and to create better vaccines that will prevent more forms of tuberculosis. Um, in our laboratory, we have been uh, trying out new antigens that are part of a hopefully improved BCG vaccine and trying to see whether children with a variety of conditions can respond to these antigens. The best prevention of child TB is still early treatment of adult patients, according to Davide Manicero, who coordinates the TB program at the Stockholm-based European Centre for Disease Prevention and Control. Within the European Union, child TB challenges go beyond diagnosis and treatment. 
We also have an unprecedented opportunity of focusing on childhood TB to prevent transmission within the borders of the European Union. Therefore, early identification and proper treatment of adult cases will prevent transmission of TB to children. This task, preventing childhood TB, diagnosing and treating it efficiently, is equally challenging in all European countries. In this hospital, here in the Romanian town of Brasov, little patients spend at least half a year on average being treated for tuberculosis. I got sick when I was playing outside and something weird appeared on my skin. So my grandmother brought me here. I got the infection from my sister who got sick first. She died. And I have to stay here at the hospital for the treatment. Each child has to take a variety of medicines every day, totaling more than a thousand pills for the standard six-month course of treatment. Pills are not perfect for children. They can be difficult to swallow, and sometimes they trigger adverse reactions like vomiting. Unfortunately, so far, there are no alternatives available. What you see on this table is the total number of pills that a child will receive in six months of treatment. The problem is that children take the same pills as adults. It would be much better if there were more child-friendly formats, like granules, syrups, or effervescent tablets, maybe even with flavors, medicines that would be more easily accepted by children. In an increasingly globalized world, no regions can feel completely safe. With freedom of movement, it's impossible to prevent the disease spreading from one continent to another. But it's still, still there. Yeah. Yeah. Big cavity here. We've seen that. And, uh, and the lymph node there and lo lots of calcification, right? What we need to remark is that over the past decade, 40,000 children developed tuberculosis in the European Union. 3,300 only over the past year. Behind each case, there is a child that is enduring uh, an enormous challenge in terms of diagnosis and treatment. We need to move forward in the development of better diagnostic, not only to diagnose adult TB, but particularly to identify and diagnose childhood TB. Equally, we need to develop better child-friendly drugs uh, uh, that can make the process of treatment childhood TB less painful and less difficult for, for children. Elimination of tuberculosis may only become possible with a range of international efforts, not just medical. The economic and social situations of some of the most TB vulnerable children is a key aspect as well.